Good morning, everyone, and, and welcome. Uh, glad you could all be here again for our second day of our virtual uh, prepare sessions. Uh, my name again uh, is Brandon Lanners. I'm the executive director of the Office of Global Learning. Uh, we are the ones that uh, run prepare. Um, I work closely with my colleague, uh, Dick Shing. Uh, Dick Shing, you wanna jump on real quick? Hi there everyone. <laughs> my name is Dick Shing and I work as a programming coordinator at Global Learning and one of the organizers for Prepare this year. So nice to meet you all. Great, thanks so much Dick Shing. And so Dick Shing is gonna be uh, managing things in the background um, while we uh, have our session today. And for those of you that are going to be in person, you'll see us uh, soon in person. And for those that will continue virtually, um, you know, we'll be uh, adding recordings um, of this session and many other sessions uh, over the coming days. So um, today, before we jump right in uh, to the content, just wanna go through a couple of things. Um, you know, if there are any questions that uh, came up um, from yesterday, um, please go ahead and number one, you can send those over a, a chat, you know, to me specifically, it has to do with logistics. But what I also want to offer, um, like I did yesterday, was a chance for people to stay on after today's session and ask any questions um, about arrival logistics. So for those of you that are doing in-person prepare, if that has to do with arrival, uh, moving in, um, COVID testing, vaccination, um, any of that, I'll plan to stay on um, at the end of all of this on so a little less than two hours. So um, that will be, um, you know, 1030 uh, Eastern time, so Ithaca time. So I'll plan to stay on. And anyone that has follow-up questions, feel free to, to let me know. Um, also, uh, for today, just want to go through the things that we'll be talking about. Um, first, we're going to hear from Cornell Health. Then we'll hear about campus safety and Cornell Police. And finally, um, we'll spend our last hour uh, with uh, intergroup dialogue. Um, and so we'll be going through each of those. These are really important resources for all students, but I think especially for you all international students to again, kind of give you a, you know, a good kind of base as we get ready to start the semester. Um, one thing for everyone that is participating uh, virtually, so that's not doing in-person prepare, and for people that are watching this recording uh, because they couldn't attend today, we're not going to be recording the second session, so the, um, the intergroup dialogue uh, project, because um, with that one, um, you know, it's a chance for people to really kind of open up and talk and we'll, doing, we'll be doing breakouts, so that one won't work. So we'll have the first hour recorded, um, but not the second hour. And then finally, for um, the schedule for the next few days, um, again, you can find that on the PREPARE website, and we'll post that in the chat in just a moment. We have that built out with a pretty good amount of detail. Um, and again, that's both for you know, in-person attendance and um, virtual attendance, remembering that for the virtual folks, we're going to be recording the sessions and we'll be adding those recordings uh, to that website um, so you can follow what happened throughout the next couple of days there. For the in-person participants, you know, we'll have our move-in coming up uh, starting this weekend and er into early next week. And then on the 17th, 18th, and 19th, that's when we'll have all of our um, in-person content. So both sessions like the ones today, and also some of the more social pieces as well. So again, I'll stay on at 1030 um, to answer any questions on logistics or anything else that, that people want to ask. Um, but um, now we are going to jump right in uh, to our visitor uh, from Cornell Health. That's Wai Kwai Wong, uh, who is Assistant Director for Community-Based Services. Um, and up oh, and there he is. I will let him take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cornell. I don't know how long. I don't know where you guys are. Are you guys? I'm not. I'm so clueless. Are folks still in town? Or are you guys still uh, calling in remotely from wherever you are? Wherever you are, welcome to Cornell, and and um, I'm sure you'll be joining us soon if you haven't already. Uh, and so um, I'm just here. Uh, for about half an hour to bore you guys with some of the details about Cornell Health, uh, because uh, during the time here, chances are you will need some healthcare. 
Uh, and so I would just uh, spend a little time talking about our services, about our clinic, what we're about, uh, and how to access us. Um, let me see if I can share a screen because I have a lovely PowerPoint presentation, which I'm sure you guys are just totally excited about. Um, let me go to slideshow. Okay, so welcome to Cornell Health. Um, as Brendan said, my name is Mike Kwong Wong. I just go by way for short, and I'm Assistant Director for um, Counseling and Psychological Services. So as you can tell, I am not a real doctor. I am actually a psychologist. So if you have any medical questions, do not ask me. I hated organic chemistry uh, with the heat of a thousand suns. Uh, and so anything that have anything to do with molecules, I can't answer. Um, but I will talk about our health center as a whole. So again, um, Cornell Health uh, is here to serve primarily all our students, undergraduate, graduate professional students who are living in Ithaca. Um, and to a lesser extent, uh, students, spouses, and partners. So we have some limited services. So some of, the, some of the ongoing services, you know, like CAPS, Counseling and Psychological Services, are not uh, available for students, spouses, and partners. We can give you referrals for those. Uh, but if you're a registered student, come on down. Uh, and so one of the reasons why we emphasize Cornell Health is that in order to uh, learn well, you have to live well. I, I hate that word, first, to learn well, to live well, to learn well, but it's true, you know, because you are a whole person uh, and we recognize that, you know, you have different identities and, and different parts of you. So you're not just a walking brain like those aliens in the old Star Trek, um, you know, that, you know, you have an emotional side, physical side, social side, financial side, spiritual side. Uh, and so we have, a we have an integrated health service to try to support you as a whole person that includes medical, physical, and other support services to help you sort of succeed uh, and hopefully you know, have a, a positive experience here at Cornell. So here we are. Uh, if you haven't been on Hope Plaza yet, you can't miss it. We're one of the uh, main buildings right at the very top of Hope Plaza, uh, right across from Olin Hall and uh, Cornell United Religious Works. Uh, we're located in Central Campus. Uh, and our hours this fall will be 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, and, uh, if you have any questions about hours, uh, you can go to our website for evening and weekend service options. Uh, one thing that we have available are 24 seven phone consultations. So even if it's three o'clock in the morning on Saturday night and you're not feeling well or something's up, you can call us and consult with a medical or a counseling professional by phone. So that's always available anytime, day or night. So we're actually pretty large. We have over 220 staff people, you know, uh, and as you can see, I think we are a fairly good looking staff uh, and we're multidisciplinary, you know, so we have doctors, nurses, counselors, you know, like myself, uh, psychiatrists, physical therapists, nutritionists, behavioral health uh, specialists, pharmacists, public health specialists, and more. So uh, if you're curious, you can always go to our website. We have a staff directory and, and if you're really bored, you can go through our staff and, and, and check us out and, and see what we're out. And, um, and I think um, some of Cornell House Valley reflects that of uh, Cornell as a whole. Where we are very committed to diversity and inclusion, uh, and we value diversity of all our patients and clients. And we work really hard towards being inclusive, uh, culturally competent, and work towards anti racism. Um, we recognize that historically, in this country at least, uh, there have been a lot of health disparities between different groups in this country uh, as reflected most recently and I suppose ongoing with this COVID crisis. Uh, and we're really committed towards addressing and uh, being open to conversations around some of those uh, issues. Uh, we're also committed to confidentiality. You know, we are a healthcare center. So by law, all our services are confidential. So your health information, whatever you share with us, even the fact that you had an appointment with us at all is confidential by law and will not be shared with anyone outside of our clinic unless you give us permission. So it doesn't matter if a professor calls, uh, if your grandmother calls, we can't even acknowledge we've seen you or anything like that. Uh, and so um, in terms of services, uh, you know, uh, we are your primary care, you know, uh, provider. Uh, and so your PCP, primary care provider, uh, will be your point of contact. Uh, and so, you know, whenever you feel sick, obviously, you know, you twist an ankle, slip on the ice or something like that. Uh, you have a non-urgent health concern, you know, you know, you have, you know, you have a little funny thing going on in your skin. You want to have somebody take a look at, you got 
the pain in your in your back, you're having sleep problems, whatever it is, uh, you know, we are your uh, people to go to. Uh, you know, if you just need regular checkup, you know, you need a physical screening, you know, PAP test, STI test, anything like that. You need prescription filled, uh, you know, uh, we're here. If you have a chronic health condition, you know, we're also here to support you and provide you support around those things. Um, I think I'm going really fast. I'll try to slow down. Um, I've been accused sometimes because I grew up in New York City. So I've been accused of talking really fast sometimes. And I think that's something that I need to sort of like watch and be careful of uh, because sometimes people don't understand me. And so I will try to slow down. Uh, but we also provide other services in, uh, in addition to sort of like your regular doctor or nurse visit. So we also provide sexual health care, uh, nutrition counseling physical therapy. Uh, we have our own labs and x-rays, which is pretty cool. Uh, we do immunizations, allergy shots, and things like that. So, you know, uh, pretty soon it'll be cold and flu season. So if you need a flu shot or anything like that, uh, we're the people to go to. Uh, we do have gender services uh, for students who are interested in exploring options uh, around their gender identity. Uh, and we do provide uh, medical and counseling support for transitioning. Uh, we have behavioral health consultants. So oftentimes uh, people will go to their doctor or nurse for what seems to be a physical problem. Uh, but oftentimes I think a very large percentage of primary care visits actually have a stress component. Uh, and so behavioral health consultants are mental health, mental health professionals who are embedded within primary care uh, who can work with you around those things. So you may go in because you've been having a lot of headaches uh, and talking with your doctor and nurse, it turns out that actually the headaches may be related to stress. Uh, and so behavioral health consultant is there uh, uh, as part of your uh, medical uh, services to help you deal with things like that. Uh, we also have some psychiatric medication management. You know, so you know, oftentimes um, students um, could benefit from psychiatric medications you know, as a tool to help them manage uh, some of the issues that they're dealing with. And so we have some availability for that. Um, a big chunk of Cornell Health consists of mental health, uh, which is sort of like uh, more the area that I'm familiar with. Uh, and so I guess I'll just slow down a little bit and talk a little bit more about mental health care because that might be less familiar to many people um, um, than it is uh, medical care. Um, and I don't know about you, uh, but for me, I mean, to this day, my own family still has no idea what it is that I do for a living exactly. You know, like I said before, they think I'm some kind of a doctor, but like not a real one. And they're always kind of confused exactly about what it is that I do for a living. Uh, and so I think most of us uh, have gone to doctors, right? We, we've gone in for checkups for you know, colds, flus, you know, broken ankles and things like that. Uh, but many of us haven't ev ever sought out mental health care. So I just want to spend a lot of time talking about that. And so the big question is why? You know, uh, why the emphasis on mental health care? Um, and I guess, we have limited time here because I can probably go on for an entire hour just on this topic alone. Um, um, so I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, but I've been at Cornell for a long time. And one thing I've learned in working with a lot of Cornell students is that a lot of you guys won't believe a thing I say unless I can show you a graph. Uh, and so uh, what I've uh, come up with is this. actually I have come up with this. Uh, this, uh, this is called the Yorkies Dodson curve. I can look it up. Uh, there are various versions of this. Uh, it was created by two, I assume, and I have no idea who they are, Yerkes and Dotson uh, in the early uh, 20th century. Uh, but what it actually shows is sort of like the relationship between your uh, level of performance and your level of arousal. Uh, and by arousal, and I'm talking mainly about stress and not maybe the kind of arousal that some of the other guys are thinking about right now. Um, but what it shows basically is, is that there is a relationship between your level of stress and, and how well you perform, how efficient you are. Uh, and what it shows, and it's what many of us probably already have figured out through experience by now, right, is that a certain amount of stress is actually okay. A certain amount of stress is actually necessary to optimize for performance. So that's good. So right now, many of you guys are hopefully feeling this. You're probably feeling pretty happy and excited to be starting, you know, here at Cornell. You know, it's great. You know, you're here at an Ivy League institution. It's all fancy schmancy. You've worked really hard to get here. Um, you know, you're feeling pretty good, hopefully, and you're excited forward to the coming year. That's great. So you're probably somewhere at that end of the curve. You're in kind of like healthy tension, all right? Uh, and in a few weeks, you know, your first assignments will be and 
maybe you start thinking about your first you know, exams or papers, or whatever it is. Uh, and like I said, a certain amount of stress is actually good. You know, a certain amount of stress actually sharpens you, you know, motivates you, you know, gets you going, you know, great. You know? And if that's where you are all the time, that's great. You know, you'll be most efficient. Um, but oftentimes, as you can see in this graph, that there is a point of diminishing returns, right? right? Past which the more stress you are experiencing, uh, the less efficient uh, you become. And so stress can come from any number of things. Certainly uh, in a month or so, when your first round of prelims and your first papers are due, you may be pretty stressed out, all right? Uh, you know, maybe you're taking something horrible like genetics or calculus or, you know, something like that. Some one of those horrible classes, which I avoided to play whenever possible, and you'll be stressed out. And if you're too stressed out, actually your performance will suffer. Because one thing we know about stress is that stress uh, impacts your body and your brain. Uh, and it takes a processing power that could be better used for you know, figuring out differential equations. Uh, and so if you're under too much stress, you actually become less efficient. One thing we also know about stress is that stress can come from any number of sources. You know, the stress can come from maybe, you know, you're not maybe meeting too many people there. You're feeling lonely, you're homesick. Um, you know, you're not finding friends as easily as you'd hoped. And, and, and you're far away from home and you're feeling kind of sad. Uh, stress could mean maybe, you know, you're not liking your classes as much as you thought. You know, these classes are actually really boring and tedious. Or maybe you don't like your roommate. Or maybe you're turning out that, well, yeah, I'm not sure Cornell is the right place for me. That's okay. I mean, these, these are kind of like normal kinds of doubts and, and fears and thoughts that many people experience. But all of these stresses can accumulate over time if left unresolved. Uh, and over time, gradually, it can actually erode your performance. Maybe you're, in addition to all of those things, you're not really taking care of yourself. You're not sleeping, you're not eating enough, you're not exercising. You're not taking the time out to relax, unwind, enjoy, paint, um, play your guitar, go watch a you know, dumb science fiction movie, whatever it is that you like to do uh, to relax and unwind. And so over time, all of these things build up uh, and up and up and can affect your performance. Uh, and then maybe in a month or two, maybe even more like three months, you can be like, this place sucks, man. It's really freezing. I hate this weather, you know? Uh, and so all of these things can build up uh, to you feeling uh, pretty unhappy and stressed out uh, and, and unable to really do the things that you need to do. That might include schoolwork and it might include, you know, dealing with your annoying roommate. It might uh, have to do with managing your own emotions. Uh, and so in a nutshell, these are some of the reasons why mental health is as important as your physical health in terms of your success here at Cornell. Uh, if nothing else, but to sort of like maximize your performance, both academically and emotionally, uh, in order for you to succeed here. So another thing about mental health care is when most people think about mental health care, they think about counseling. You know, they, they picture, you know, uh, somebody laying on a couch talking about their mother or something like that, you know, while some middle-aged man with glasses and a great beard sits there and scribbling, you know, inscrutable things in their notebook. Uh, but one thing about mental health care here at Cornell is that it's not just about counseling, but that mental health care can encompass a broad array of things. Uh, and so there's not one size fits all. Not everyone necessarily needs counseling. Uh, and so one of the things that we will do uh, is that uh, in the initial um, uh, appointment with us is that we will sort of like figure out what your needs are and try to match you with the service that you need. And so um, that could be of, of any number of things, right? It could be something simple because I think sometimes students don't really need counseling, but what they need are tips, ideas, resources. And so maybe we can help them. Um, we can provide them some self-directed online resources. Many students benefit a lot from those kinds of things. And, and uh, they read up on things, they learn certain skills that way, and boom, you know, that's great. That's all they need. Uh, sometimes what they actually need are other resources, like the learning strategies, student disability services. Maybe they need to learn about, more about other support services, you know, like uh, writing support, you know, the college advising office and things like that, and we can help direct them to there. Uh, we provide a, a series of psychoeducational workshops throughout the year things on like procrastination, uh, you know, things like time management that can help students sort of like just learn some basic skills to help them succeed. 
Uh, maybe what they need um, are some sort of group support because oftentimes what students really uh, can benefit from um, is, is sort of like, you know, meeting and talking with other people who really get it, who understand what they're going through uh, and are experiencing similar issues. Uh, sometimes what students need is something that they can get in the community, uh, certainly, especially now with telehealth. Uh, there are a lot of resources, for example, if you're looking for some long-term counseling, some people really benefit from seeing somebody every week, you know, for their entire four years here. Great. You know, we can refer you to community providers who can, can provide that kind of long-term or more intensive care. Um, or we can provide individual counseling. You know, what CAPS provides is um, short-term counseling, you know, but a lot of students benefit from that. And certainly we see thousands and thousands of students every year in individual counseling. So we can also provide that. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, some students, maybe about a third of our students, uh, benefit from, from medication management at some point during their time here. Uh, and so we can provide support around those things. And we also have uh, something for folks who are not sure. You know, some people are really not sure, you know, if, if what they're dealing with is serious enough. Or maybe they're like, ah, oh, you know, even so, you know, the idea of calling CAPS is just kind of weird. It's, it's just something that I'm a bit nervous about. Uh, we have a program called Let's Talk, uh, which are basically informal dropping consultation errors. Uh, they're basically first come, first serve. Right now, they're done by Zoom. Uh, at some point, when we resume sort of in person services, um, uh, you know, uh, we will do those at different locations on campus. So if you just feel like dropping by and just having a conversation with a counselor, just drop on by. Um, other Cornell Health Services include student disability services. Uh, oftentimes, um, uh, if a student is dealing with some sort of ongoing physical or or mental kind of concern. Student disability services can help you get uh, formal accommodations with your professors and things like that for things like extra time, um, you know, uh, transcription services, things like that, accessibility, uh, you know, surprise, surprise, a fair number of college students drink and do drugs. Uh, you know, it's no surprise. I confess I did a little bit myself when I was an undergrad. Uh, uh, and so we do uh, have alcohol and other drug services for students who wish to address those things and need some help with that. Uh, we have victim advocacy services um, because bad things do happen here at Cornell and Ithaca like everywhere else. Uh, and sometimes a student has uh, undergone some sort of traumatic experience, um, uh, can talk to one of our victim advocates on a confidential basis just to talk about their options uh, and to get support around those things. Um, Sometimes students maybe aren't satisfied with our services. So we have patient advocates that you can go to uh, and discuss your concerns, you know, uh, about, you know, um, how maybe your needs weren't met, or maybe you weren't treated uh, uh, in, with the respect that you felt like you deserved or something like that. And we want to hear about those things. Uh, we recognize that Cornell students come from all over the world and speak, you know, many, many, many languages. Uh, and, and so we do have language translation services available if you feel more comfortable that way. Uh, we also have a pharmacy. Uh, so if you go to Cornell uh, Health Building, uh, right to your left is our own pharmacy service. Uh, and so there you can, you know, get your prescriptions filled, non-prescription medications, you know, self-care supplies, band-aids, you know, toothpaste, things like that sexual health supplies. Uh, we have nicotine cessation supplies if you feel like quitting smoking. We have some healthy snacks. We only have healthy snacks, unfortunately. So if you're looking for potato chips, you're out of luck, you have to go someplace else. Um, in terms of appointments, you know, most of our services do require an appointment. Uh, and so um, the schedule, you can just call us uh, during business hours. Uh, and then some appointments can be scheduled online through your secure patient portal at mycornellhealth.edu or health.cornell.edu. Uh, because of the ongoing sort of um, COVID uh, pandemic that is still flaring, uh, most, uh, many medical services are offered in person. Uh, however, most CAP services are provided by telehealth, by Zoom um, until further notice. And our Zoom platform is uh, secure uh, and uh, provides confidential services. So you can, um, these things probably change by the week. So you can check our website for, sort of, uh, for updates. 
uh, students are required to have other health insurance that meet uh, Cornell's uh, requirements or to enroll in student uh, health plan. And I believe most international students are required to be on the student health insurance plan. Uh, uh, all students, registered enrolled students can use our health services no matter what insurance they have, however. Uh, um, uh, for medical care, uh, we do bill your uh, health insurance, obviously. Um, uh, CAPS does not bill insurance, however. Uh, but most services uh, require it to bill a copay. Uh, some services uh, have no cost, you know, uh, first time counseling, first uh, time counseling appointments are taught, groups or workshops, labs and stuff, certain things might uh, have more uh, additional costs, you know, out of pocket costs for COVID or influenza uh, immunizations. Students who do not have the student health insurance plan uh, have to pay a, a, a health fee, which supports our ability to provide affordable health care to all students require, regardless of what insurance they have. And one thing about American uh, insurance is that we have a crazy, confusing system, which I have, I still don't understand how it works. So uh, I will we'll hustle because I think we're running short on time. So again, if there's a, a medical or mental health emergency, you know, call 911. Uh, that is the emergency. Uh, uh, or you can call the Cornell Police directly at 255-5111. Um, if it is not an emergency, you know, uh, then you can call Cornell Health 24-7 uh, for a phone consultation. Uh, you can speak with a, a licensed medical provider or a licensed counselor at any time there. Uh, so again, it's at 607-255-5155. And then you get, you, I forget exactly. I think you have to press four uh, to speak to a counselor and maybe two for a medical provider, but you can listen to the menu. Uh, and again, I think there are a variety of national phone or tech supports. Uh, uh, and again, you can look at those resources uh, at our website. So we're really here to support your health and well-being. So health is more than just you know colds and flus. It is about your well-being, physical, uh, mental, spiritual, uh, social. Uh, and so we're really here to um, um, help you do that. Uh, and again, I really emphasize uh, uh, getting, doing things like taking care of yourself, you know, getting sleep. Uh, eight hours a night, believe it or not, is what they recommend, which I strongly uh, recommend. Eating well, you know, uh, move your body, exercise. You know, Ithaca is a beautiful place to be outdoors, even if it's warm and muggy. You know, time management, uh, find healthy ways to de-stress. You're not just, you know, academic machines to your human beings. Uh, you know, you need to do things to uh, feed your body and mind. Uh, connect with others. You know, uh, there are a lot of clubs, a lot of opportunities here to connect with the community. Uh, I think the students who uh, thrive here, the most are the ones who are able to, to form connections and build a community for themselves. Uh, and really, really important, learn when to ask for help. Uh, and I don't know about you, but when I was an undergrad, that was something that I was really, really, really bad at, asking for help. I would have rather had my teeth pulled out with a, without anesthesia than ask for help. Uh, and that was a mistake. So if you find yourself struggling, just ask, talk to somebody. Uh, help is available. Uh, we are here for you. Uh, and we want to support you. And I think I am out of time. Well, uh, Wei, thank you so very much. I really uh, appreciate um, all of that information um, and the humor uh, at this time of the day. I appreciate that as well. Um, oh, I know it's really big. <laughs> I was leaning <laughs> into the camera. Didn't realize that. <laughs> no, it was it was great. It was great. Really appreciate it. Um, well, let's see. I, it looks like I have one question that came in, so I'll ask that. Um, certainly, if others uh, from the audience um, have questions right now. Um, you know, please go ahead and, and raise your hand um, using the Zoom function, or you can send that question uh, to everyone through the chat, or you can send that just to me, and I can and I can relay that to our guest as well. And if not, of course, you know, um, we already provided all the contact information um, that you need to be in touch with Cornell Health. So the one question that I have that's come in is um, what kind of STD or STI um, preventative vaccines can I get at Cornell Health? Do you know about that one by any chance? 
I do. I think we do have some things. Um, <laughs> I had invited uh, Wendy Cecina, who is a registered nurse, to, to uh, join us this morning to answer exactly these kinds of questions. Uh, unfortunately, she uh, uh, got sick this morning and is actually uh, taking a COVID test right now as we speak. Uh, and so um, we do have preventative vaccines available for HPV, I think, things like that. But I don't know the details of that, unfortunately. But we do have some vaccines. Uh, and so if anyone is interested, uh, um, um, uh, just give us a call and I'm sure people who are much more knowledgeable than I can can answer these questions more specifically. Uh, um, also uh, joining us today is, is Linda Boss. If, if there are any insurance questions and things like that, it's something also that I'm not good at answering. Great. No, thank you for that. Definitely understand. I think, you know, students um, should be able to go to the Cornell Health website, I imagine, and, and navigate around to see the services that are available. And I would say, you know, go ahead as well, students, and you know, you can reach out to Cornell Health and and um, ask uh, questions uh, that way. Um, and then we have another question that's come in, um, a couple. So uh, a question about dental services. So if uh, students have a dental issue, are they referred to a separate dentist by Cornell Health? Um, any sense of how that works? Um, I believe so, and I believe you know we don't provide any dental services. So there are a couple of dentists located nearby in College Town and downtown and stuff like that. I think students go to, but that is unfortunately not something that Cornell Health provides. So you have to go off campus for that. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, another question that came in was that if someone hasn't satisfied all of their health requirements, will they still be able to participate in um, PREPARE? So in our PREPARE, this current um, orientation. And so I think the answer there would be the key thing that we need from people is that you have um, received your uh, COVID test uh, upon arrival and that you know, you've waited the time for those results to come back and that those results have come back negative. Um, students have to wait. You can't participate in the you know, PREPARE activities starting uh, Tuesday evening until you've gotten those results back. Um, I provided instructions uh, to everyone on you know, how to get that test um, and how you know, the way that you'll hear about those results. Um, there may be other Cornell Health pieces that are required. I think of specifically like other kinds of vaccination or COVID vaccination as well. Um, you know, I provided information to Cornell Health so you can read through those. I'm not as well versed in this moment in terms of some of the other types of vaccinations. I know the university provides a couple of different dates by when you have to have your vaccinations. Um, and if a certain amount of time has passed, then you do start to have your ability to participate in campus activities, campus services, and even classes um, impacted. I don't know why anything else that you want to add to that? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I know that there's there's so many rules and regulations around these things that are changing constantly. Uh, and so if you have questions, I think the best thing is to call or, uh, and I'm sure that there, there's a lot of information on the website that might be uh, able to answer some of these questions. Thank you for that. And we have one other question um, uh, before we move on to our, our next session. And of course, anyone, you know, just like you know, our guest said, um, if you do have questions that are health related, you know, do reach out to Cornell Health. Um, if you're having any other, you know, if you're just wondering, is this a Cornell Health question or for someone else, certainly reach out to us, you know, with prepare, you can just send that email to the prepare um, email address. And I see a couple of other questions have come in. And so I'll be able to work through those um, directly with people that have asked them throughout the rest of the, the morning. Um, and I see there's a question about the swimming test and how long after the first uh, vaccination or first dose, if you're just arriving, do you have to wait? And I think that's one I will have to definitely find out about. I appreciate that, yeah. that specific question. Um, and so for those of you that have written in others, I'll be trying to work through those um, through our time uh, right now. And then um, Lynn, maybe just a quick question for you in terms of international students and the you know, um, student health plan. My understanding is um, that international students are usually not able, they're required to be on the student health plan and only in very select circumstances um, are they able to uh, request an exemption from that plan. Is that, um, does that sound accurate? That is absolutely accurate. 
So um, unless a student has a US-based government plan or a US-based employer plan, they would not be able to opt out of the Cornell Student Health Plan. So if a parent or a spouse is employed in the US and they have insurance through that employer, would they be able to opt out? Great, no, thank you for that clarification. I hope that's helpful sure. for everyone. Also, just I wanna piggyback on something that Wei had said um, earlier, um, mentioning the health fee of $210 per semester. As of this year, it's applicable to all students registered on the Ithaca campus, not just students who are, don't have the Cornell student insurance. So students on SHIP will also see that um, health fee charge on their bursar account. And that it's for every single student on the Ithaca campus. And related to dental questions, dental coverage is not included as part of the medical health insurance with SHIP. There is an optional dental plan that students can elect into. Um, open enrollment is open until August 31st. So if it's something they're interested in, it would be a good idea to go to our website. Well, Lynn, thank you so much for that, for that additional insight. I know the website has a lot of information there, and I'm sure if students have questions, they're able to reach out to Cornell Health and the you know, relevant uh, responsible people and, and work through those questions. Does that sound right? Absolutely, and I know that both at Cornell Health or the Student Health Benefits Office, we're all here to help in any way we can. So um, as Wei said, don't hesitate to ask questions. If you need help, ask, reach out. We're here to be of assistance. Oh, that is, that is a very wise advice. I as well should have taken uh, that advice much earlier in my life. So everyone <laughs> do reach out, ask for help. We're here for you and we're looking forward to everyone getting to Cornell. So. Uh, Wei, Lynn, uh, Cornell Health, thank you both very much for being here. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Best of luck to everyone. Best of luck. Good luck and welcome. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, well, all right, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and move now um, to our next uh, session. And let's see. There we go. Um, this session is going to be looking at campus safety, talk about Cornell police. And so we have our crime prevention officer, Jody Gonzella. Thank you so much for being here, Jody. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, it's a little different this year, obviously doing um, the prepare event um, online. So, uh, but it's really great. I, I wish I could see all your faces in person like I normally do, but um, welcome to Cornell University. If you're not here when you get here, um, we can't wait to share a beautiful campus with you. And I'm just gonna pull up my PowerPoint here and share my screen get started. All right, so thank you so much for attending. This is just going to be a quick 30 minute uh, informational about Cornell University Police Department and who we are and where we're located and what we do. So just a quick note that Cornell University Police Department is accredited um, by IACLEA. And so what that means, um, if you're not if you're not familiar with an accreditation um, standard is basically that we have policies and procedures which um, are in place, We've, we have set in place with IACLEA and that we um, basically every four years we get accredited to make sure that we're following all of those policies and standards. So kind of what it means is um, we're, we're like the real deal. So we don't just uh, talk the talk, we walk the walk and we make sure that we follow our policies and procedures um, daily. Okay, so this is actually a picture of our, our badge. So Cornell University police versus a municipality. So a municipality um, being like a state or local agency, like a city as, as in Ithaca city or um, a town police. So um, an example here would be like the New York state police, which our jurisdiction lies within um, the Cayuga Heights Village Police or Ithaca Police and um, Tompkins County Police. So those are all some of the different agencies that you might come in contact with here at Cornell University. Um, but for the most part, Cornell University Police is really only um, responds to Cornell University um, jurisdiction or calls, okay? So essentially uh, our, our 
academy and training is the same as any of your local police departments. We go to a, a full police um, training academy and we have a 14 week um, field training program once our officers get out of the academy successfully graduate. Um, it's a big deal. It's usually six months long and they learn everything from um, on, you know, in hand defensive tactics to firearm skills and definitely learning all of the, um, the laws that apply here at Cornell University. So things like um, federal and state laws, as well as our local, um, our local violation laws. And we do get our powers from the Tompkins County Sheriff's Department. So just a little bit about our, our individual police department. We have about 50 sworn officers um, we work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We never take a day off. Even during COVID, we were fully staffed, um, at least minimum of three officers per shift. So if you ever need help, um, obviously later in the presentation, I'll make sure that you have all our contact information. But if you ever need help day or night, we are here. So don't ever wonder if uh, what our hours are because they are never ending. <laughs> Um, so we have about 50 authorized officers on the road that are in, um, I guess, kind of, if you can see me, uh, uniform positions, about seven civilian support staff, because we do generate some paperwork, and about 12 authorized telecommunicators. So a telecommunicator is the person when you dial 607-255-1111 uh, or pick up an emergency phone or blue light um, for help. Those are the people that will answer on the other end and um, talk you through your emergency or non-emergency issue. Okay, and we also have about 35 blue light escorts or security guards. So our records and communication center, this is actually a picture of our dispatch center. So we're pretty special here in that um, we're, we're a full-fledged police agency. So we also have our dispatch center which is located here in Barton Hall. So if you're not familiar with Barton Hall, that's where our police headquarters is and our dispatch center. And once you get on campus, if you're not already, I urge you to become familiar with our location. So Barton Hall is um, one of the older buildings on campus. It looks kind of like a castle and it is located right next to um, the Statler Hotel. So our physical address is 117 Statler Drive. So this is a picture of our, our dispatch center. And what they do is um, they dispatch the officers to any emergency or non-emergency calls on campus. Um, they also uh, provide information if there's a, a vehicle in traffic stop as to whether or not that, um, that vehicle and driver are, um, are legal to be driving. And also they handle our mass emergency notification um, tests. And in the event that there was actually an emergency, they would send out that mass notification. So we have a lot of different modes of patrol here. Um, as you can see, there's a picture of one of our cars. They look fairly similar. Um, we don't really have any Crown Victorias anymore, but um, we still have white vehicles with the same logo on the side. So mostly you'll see SUVs on campus. And um, in the photo, these are both of our officers in the photo are wearing bike uniforms. So um, if you see anyone wearing bright yellow, those are usually bike officers. So we have an honor guard um, on campus. Basically what that just means is that um, they get in their fancy um, uniforms and we attend funerals and parades and ceremonies. So if you ever see those officers, they are usually um, performing some sort of ceremony. We do have two canine units and both of our canine units, we currently have um, Luna, which is not in the picture. Luna is a German short hair pointer. And in the picture is Axel and they're both um, trained in explosive detection and um, tracking as well as incendiary devices. So like I said before, we have bike patrol on campus. So oftentimes you'll see um, officers traveling by bike. It allows us to kind of interact with the public a little more and enforce um, bicycle and tra traffic laws and pedestrian laws. 
Um, on campus, you will see if anyone is planning to, to drive on campus and have your own vehicle on campus, just know that um, you have to follow all of the New York State vehicle and traffic laws. And those are all available online if you have any questions um, about what those are, or if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask um, what is uh, acceptable here in, in New York State. Um, but we do some state funding and such things as STEP, which is like um, speed enforcement, buckle up New York, and pedestrian enforcement. We also have um, child passenger safety technicians on campus. I, myself and my partner are actually both child passenger uh, safety seat technicians. So if you have or know anyone that has children and they aren't sure if their child safety seat is installed properly, please come and see us, we can make sure that that is uh, that your child is traveling safely. And this is a picture of our Cornell Police Auxiliary. So basically what they do is um, travel by foot at night to check windows and doors. They're kind of an extra set of eyes and ears on campus, and then also um, escort individuals around campus. So our lost and found department um, for the entire campus is located here in Barton Hall. So again, that physical address is 117 Staller Hall. So items can be dropped off. We have a drop-off box um, that is obviously available 24-7. Um, and then um, we do, every, every fall, we do an auction for items that are never retrieved. So um, if you're interested in purchasing bicycles or, um, or anything like that, keep an eye on the Chief's um, blue light messages because that will, be, um, that will be made aware prior to that auction. So crime prevention is basically uh, the anticipation, recognition, and appraisal of a crime risk and the initiation of some action to remove or reduce it. So basically here on campus, um, we don't have any fences around campus, right? Where obviously um, we intend um, and expect to be an open um, environment. We want people to, to come and feel welcome and utilize all of our, our services and our buildings, um, such as the libraries, the athletics facilities. Um, but however, because we're open, sometimes um, people with not such good intentions um, can come on campus. And we wanna make sure that everyone is being, is aware of that possibility and is being safe and taking the precautions um, to basically try to prevent um, themselves from becoming a victim. So essentially the crime prevention triangle um, is, is, is acknowledging that um, if you remove the opportunity um, to become a victim, uh, then you know prevention is basically uh, the best the best source, right? So our mission here at the Crime Prevention Unit is um, to deter crime or the perception of crime and to reduce victimization in the Cornell community by establishing a partnership with the Cornell community. Luckily, we're step one, right? So provide educational programs, which this is just one of the educational programs we provide. Um, online, we have an extensive um, website online. So if you look up Cornell University Police, we have our crime statistics are posted there um, per the Gene Cleary Act and um, our campus watch. So if you have or ever have any questions about the kind of resources that we provide or need contact information, please go to that website. Um, we also conduct annual lighting surveys, security surveys, and we take care of access control. So we wear a lot of different hats here in crime prevention. So in this picture um, on the left-hand side, you see a two-way um, emergency phone call box. So you will see, um, if you're paying attention while you're in and about campus, you'll see these in buildings. So a lot of them are in academic buildings near um, exits, near staircases. And essentially what this um, two-way communication does is it connects directly to Cornell University Dispatch. So if you push that silver button um, and wait for a second, you will hear a voice come on and say, Cornell University Police, what's your emergency? Um, at that point, if you can explain what your emergency is, 
um, then you would do so and an officer would come directly to your location and assist you with that. Um, we, our policy is to send officers to any 911 hangups that occur on campus, as well as emergency phone or blue light hangups. So if you push the, um, the button and you're not able to speak or you're on the move quickly, um, just know that an officer will still be attending that location um, to check and make sure that there's no one um, in need of help. So again, on the left-hand side, these are emergency phones. They're located inside buildings. Um, and on the right-hand side, these are blue light phones. So we call them blue light phones because you can see there's a long pole with a blue light on top so that you can easily identify them at night by their, their blue light. So, so keep your eyes out for those um, just so that you know where they're located in the event that cell phones get lost or batteries die. Um, that way you can, you can get help um, if you're in an emergency or even if you don't have an emergency but you're lost, um, feel free to pick that up and, and get some help, okay? So we will obviously, we want people to feel comfortable on campus so we'll send an officer out to your location and get you the help that you need. The other important thing to note is that um, on your cell phones, when you call 911 or 607-255-1111, we can't immediately triangulate your location like they do on the crime shows. Uh, it's actually not really that easy um, to do. So if you're not aware of your physical location, um, it's probably better to use an emergency phone or a blue light phone, that way um, the officer, the dispatcher can send the officer to your exact location. So security violations that we check for when we're out on campus um, and things you want to be aware of are open, unsecured doors or windows. Um, and obviously we want, if an area is supposed to be secure, it's important that it's remain secure. So um, please don't prop any doors um, that are supposed to be locked open. Um, we take security very seriously here. Um, so there are some locations on campus, such as labs, that um, if a door is propped open, then an alarm will go off and an officer will, will come and check that area and make sure that that, that is secure. We want you to um, be aware on campus and, and notify us of anything that you, that you see or hear that is suspicious. So um, here, the Department of Homeland Safety has kind of coined this phrase called, if you see something, say something. So um, we wanna make sure that you have all of the ways that you can get a hold of Cornell Police. And in the event that uh, you find or see something suspicious, uh, you have multiple options to get help um, in that event, okay? So this is another option here on the screen. We have Rave Mobile Guardian app. So this is an application that you can download on your phone. It is free for all Cornell faculty, staff, and students. So um, we actually have a 25 minute presentation just on this app alone. So this is just a very quick um, introduction to it, but essentially it allows you to set a safety timer or text with Cornell University Police Dispatch which is a really cool thing because there's no other way that you can, um, can text with them other than this app, um, get help from 911, provide safety tips, and it has a map to all the blue light phones. So um, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask. Um, our emergency phone number. So I do have to um, correct in the last um, presentation, the number for Cornell Police, the emergency and non-emergency number um, was just one number off. So if you wrote that down, make sure that you rewrite it down. So our emergency and non-emergency number that is answered right here in Cornell Dispatch is 607-255-1111. So make sure you put that in your cell phone or write it down. Again, that's emergency and non-emergency. So if you have any questions about resources or you're not sure who to call on campus, um, please feel free to call Dispatch. They have um, they're a wealth of knowledge and have access to all kinds of information. Um, obviously, 911 is our emergency number within this county and the state, um, well, and the country. So 911 will always get you help no matter where you are, okay? Um, the only difference is if you're on campus and you call 911 from your cell phone, it will still get you help. Um, but the dispatcher that will pick up is in Tompkins County. So it will either be routed to Cornell Police um, or they'll just, uh, they'll just 
contact Cornell University Police Dispatcher. So either way, you're going to get help. Just make sure you have both of those phone numbers. Um, and you can't call 911 for non-emergency uh, Cornell University information. So um, our lost and found is 7197, so 255-7197. However, you don't have to call that directly. You can call 607-255-1111 and ask for the lost and found department and they will send you over there. So our crime prevention um, contact information, my partner is Bev Van Cleef, and this is her phone number and I am Jody Kenzella. And that is my direct line to my office. So feel free um, to, to write that down and contact me directly with any and all questions that you have. Um, underneath that is our email address. So this is um, the crime prevention email address. So if either one of us are out on vacation or sick, um, the other one can go ahead and answer any questions that we get in at that email address. So um, one of the things that we like to touch on here in this presentation is gorge safety. So um, you're gonna hear a lot about the gorges and how beautiful they are. I mean, Ithaca's tagline is Ithaca is gorgeous. So, and it is, um, but the gorges are much safer to look at than um, swim in. So this little picture here just kind of shows you a visual of what can potentially happen if you swim in the gorges. Um, four people have lost their lives um, swimming in the Cornell University gorges. And um, it's, it's not only dangerous for the individual that is, that is in that situation, but also for the first responders that have to go in and, and recover them. So please make sure that you are only um, swimming in pools or in areas that are um, approved um, in the area that have lifeguards, okay? So uh, we do have many areas in Cornell, um, not in Cornell, but in Ithaca in general that are New York State parks that are safe to swim. Um, you can still swim in a gorge, but in a safe controlled area with a lifeguard. So feel free to contact us if you wanna find out where those are. Um, here's a quick list of them. So Teganic Falls State Park, Buttermilk Falls State Park, Robert Treeman, and of course there's the pools. Swimming on campus is allowed in these two locations, Helen Newman Hall and Teba Hall. All right, so are there any um, questions and concerns? That was, questions or concerns, that was um, a very fast rendition. Thank you so much for all of that information. Um, really helpful for, for all of us, you know, good reminders. And, um, you know, this is an opportunity again for students to ask any questions. Um, of Jody, you know, while we're here live, um, or if people want to uh, send uh, me a question through uh, the chat, um, that works out as well. But then, of course, Jody provided all the contact information. So if people don't have any questions right now, you can get in touch with with them um, in the coming days. Um, so maybe we'll, you know, see anything else coming in from from people. Raise your hand um, if you have any questions that you want to ask live right now. The other thing too, I just want to touch on um, that for whatever reason wasn't in the presentation is that we do have an anonymous reporting site. So um, we do, it's called the silent witness form. And the link for that is on our website. So Cornell University Police Department website. And also um, once you get on campus and are checking your campus email every Friday um, during when school is in session, our chief who is um, deputy chief or chief Honan, we'll be sending out a blue light um, email message. And there's a link to the silent witness form um, in that um, email that goes out weekly. So um, please know that it's anonymous and it's our full intention is to have, um, to for, for faculty, staff and students to be able to report tips um, and um, you know not, not be in fear of any kind of retaliation um, just be completely anonymous. So, and they are investigated immediately and anonymously. Well, Jody, thank you for that and, and for everything, um, you know, for taking your time with us this morning. Um, it looks like no questions have come in right now, but people know, you know, who to contact and that's great that they're going to connect uh, you with all the great work that you and your team are doing. So um, from all of our international students and from the Office of Global Learning and our prepare team, thank you so very much for being with us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone and hopefully we'll get to see you on campus. If you're in Barton Hall, feel free to stop by and say hello.
That sounds great. Well, thanks, Jody. Take care. Thanks. You too.